In this lesson, I am going to introduce you to some very basic stoichiometry problems. Um, most chemistry students spend almost the first half of the semester kind of building up to this because there are a lot of little skills involved. The good news is they're all easy skills. You just have to put them together in the right order. And when we go through these problems today, what you're going to see is most of this you already know. We're literally just adding one little step. So the basic skills that you need to have before attempting these problems are you should be able to calculate your molar mass. You should be able to write and name chemical formulas, ionic, covalent. You should be able to use the stock method. You should know those special diatomic molecules like hydrogen gas, chlorine gas, fluorine gas, those sorts of things. You should be able to write a chemical reaction. We've already had the videos on these. Synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double displacement, combustion. You should be able to, when given the reactants, predict the products of those reactions, and you should also be able to balance those chemical reactions. And lastly, you need to be very comfortable with gram-mole conversions because very often, like in our examples today, you may be given grams or they may ask for the answer in grams, so you're gonna to have to be able to convert. The new skill that we're learning today is simply something called a mole-to-mole -mole ratio. And we use the mole-to-mole -mole ratio to change from one compound to a different compound, almost like right in the middle of the problem. So you may start with one substance, but your answer is going to end up being a different substance. And we cross that bridge in the problem using the mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So that's what we're going to start talking about before we actually jump in to some examples. So um, just to give you an idea of what a mole-to-mole -mole ratio is, first thing I want to tell you is this. The numbers in the mole-to-mole -mole ratio come from the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. This is so important. So up until this point with my students, any time we're doing a gram-mole conversion or perhaps a mole-atom-mole-molecule conversion, I'm always telling them do not put a number with the word mole. For example, if you're converting carbon from grams to mole, it's going to be 12.01 grams of carbon per mole. And I've been telling them we know that's an understood one in front of the mole, but don't even write the one. And the reason I tell my students to do this is because when we write the mole-to-mole -mole ratio, we specifically want to see a number in front of the word mole. And when you see that number, even the ones, we're even going to write those, that draws your attention to the fact that we have a mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So, for example, I've just got an um, easy little equation here. And these numbers in front... These are our coefficients. That's an understood one. We don't write it, but we know that's what it is. So we have a three, an understood one, and a two. These are where the numbers in our mole-to-mole -mole ratio are going to come from. So let's just take a look at some of the different ratios that we see in, um, in this equation. I could say there are three moles of hydrogen gas per every one mole of nitrogen gas. If I were to compare these, there's three of these to one of these. I could actually flip that and I could say there is one mole of nitrogen gas to every three moles of hydrogen gas. That's exactly the same thing. No difference there. We've just flipped it over. What's important is that you have the right coefficient with the right substance. I could cross um, sides of the equation. I could say there are three moles of hydrogen gas per every two moles of ammonia. I could flip that. I could say there are two mo moles of ammonia per every three moles of hydrogen gas. Maybe I want to compare these two. 
I could say there's one mole of nitrogen gas to every two moles of ammonia. So a mole to mole ratio is simply taking any two formulas in your reaction. They may be on the same side, they may be on different sides, it does not matter, and you're just writing the ratio of how many moles of one thing to how many moles of another. It would be like me having a classroom of 10 students, and let's say I had six girls and I had four boys. I could say six girls to four boys, or I could flip it and say four boys to six girls, but it's still the same ratio. So just remember, you can flip a ratio. So again, the numbers in the ratio simply come from the numbers in your balanced equation. And that's why it's going to be so important that we start with a balanced equation every single time. So we're going to go ahead and jump in and we're going to do our first example. I'll break this down. I'll talk about all the details with you. And what I'm really wanting you to see is that sometimes these long, just nasty looking problems aren't bad. You've just got to, to pull out the main things that you need. So let's read this problem. Phosphorus trichloride is a colorless toxic liquid with a pungent odor. It is also highly volatile. It is produced industrially by reacting solid white phosphorus with chlorine gas. It is used to produce many chemicals that are used in insecticides, plasticizers, and flame retardants. If a chemist needs to make 250 grams of phosphorus trichloride, what is the minimum mass of chlorine gas required? So right here is the meat of your problem. All this stuff at the beginning, they are just telling you all about phosphorus trichloride, what it's used for, just giving you some interesting information. This is kind of the meat of the problem right here. This is what we're really interested in. And um, what I tell students is you're looking for two things. What they gave you, that's going to be the number, we call that the given, and what they want. So they gave me 250 grams of phosphorus trichloride, they want the mass of chlorine gas. So they gave me phosphorus trichloride and they want chlorine gas. We're going to come back to that. That's going to be very important. But before I can do anything, I'm going to have to have a balanced equation. So let's just look at our clues and see what we're working with here. They're telling me I am starting with um, white phosphorus and chlorine gas. Now, I have already given my students a heads up on this. Um, white phosphorus is actually P4. If you're a beginning chemistry student, that would probably be included in the problem. Your teacher's probably going to tell you that. So they're telling me white phosphorus plus chlorine gas. Now, I know that there's a 2 there because I've memorized that. I know that's one of my diatomics. And I know just from reading the problem that gives me phosphorus trichloride, which is PCl3. So right there I have my reaction. So that's what you're going to have to start with. Now, something that I have found makes it much easier for students, especially when we get into limiting reactants, is to go ahead and do a little housekeeping here. And by housekeeping, what I mean is go ahead and find the masses of all these things and just jot the mass down right on top so that when you need it, it's ready for you just to pull out and stick in the problem. For example, phosphorus um, has a mass of 30.97, and if I multiply that by a 4, the mass of P4 is going to be 123.88. We know that's gram per mole. Chlorine gas, that's 35.45 times 2. So that's 70.9 grams per mole. And phosphorus trichloride, that's three chlorines plus the mass of one phosphorus, that is 137.32 grams per mole. So all I have done here is I have read the problem, I have pulled out the reactants, 
They told me what the product was. I wrote that down. And then I went ahead and just found the masses of everything. So if I need them, they're there. It's kind of like when you watch a cooking show and the person doing the show, um, they're like, okay, now I'm ready for my half cup of chopped onions. And there happens to be a bowl there with the onions already chopped up and they're ready to go. Someone's already done that for her. So everything's nice and neat as she goes through the process. So this is just everything prepared for you. Now, again, um, the next thing we've got to do is we've got to balance this reaction because we're going to need those coefficients so that we have the numbers in our mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So I have phosphorus and chlorine. I'm going to repeat the list on the other side. I have a great video on balancing equations, so if that gives you trouble, just go take a look at it. I have four phosphorus atoms and I have two chlorines. I have one phosphorus on this side and three chlorines. I have four phosphoruses here. Um, I need four here, and I'm gonna do this in a different color ink just so you can see those coefficients stand out. So I'm gonna put a four right there. Four times one, that's four phosphoruses, and four times three is 12 chlorines. So on this side, my phosphoruses look good, but I've only got two chlorines. If I put a six right here, Six times two is going to also be 12 chlorines, and now I am balanced. So these are our coefficients that we will use in the problem. And remember, that's an understood one. You don't normally write that, but I'm just going to write the one there. So if we happen to use it, you'll know where it came from. So really, we haven't done anything new at this point. We've written our reaction, we've found the masses, and we have balanced it. And I want you to notice, I like to balance after I find the masses. Because I have found with beginning students, if I balance first, they are bad to want to pull this number into the mass. This mass does not include the coefficient. This mass is just the molecule. That's very important. That's why I like to balance last. Um, it doesn't really matter, but do not include this number in this mass. That's very important. So now I'm actually ready to start a stoichiometry problem. This is what we've been trying to get to. So what I need to do is identify the two things, what they gave me and what they want. They gave me phosphorus trichloride. They gave me 250 grams of that. That's the given. And they want me to find chlorine gas. So I have located what they gave me and what they want. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and write that ratio just over here to the side. I just wanna see what it looks like. So there are six moles of chlorine gas to every four moles of phosphorus trichloride. Or I could flip it and I could write there are four moles of phosphorus trichloride to every six moles of chlorine gas. Either one of these are a possibility that I might be plugging in. Um, you'll know how to plug it in when we get to that point. It's very easy. So what they gave me and what they want, I have written down the ratio of those two things. They don't mention phosphorus, so I'm just not concerned with it at this point. I am just assuming there is plenty of that. So now we're ready to do the problem. So when we do a stoichiometry problem, the first thing we want to write down is the given. And the given is 250 grams of phosphorus trichloride. So I'm going to write 250 grams of PCl3. And I'm going to draw a nice long line here and a short line. And you guys know this process. If you've been taking any kind of chemistry, you know we're doing dimensional analysis. Basically, we're just lining all the ratios up so that the unit on the top is always on the bottom in the next step. Now, in stoichiometry, if your given happens to be in grams, the first thing you're gonna have to do is convert it to moles. You always have to convert the given from gram to mole. Um, if they give you moles, then you're in good shape. But if they give you grams, you've got to go from gram to mole. So the mass of PCL3 
is 137.32, so I'm going to write 137.32 grams of PCL3 per mole of PCL3. Now, if you'll remember, we figured up this mass earlier, so we didn't have to stop what we were doing and figure it up. We just wrote it down. So, so far, what we've done is we've gone from gram to mole. You guys know how to do that. Grams cancel. And now we're ready for our next step. Now we're ready for the new skill. Stoichiometry is all about the mole-to-mole -mole ratio. Right here, I have moles of PCL3. Now that I've got that in moles, I'm going to plug my ratio in right here to get from PCL3 to Cl2. So, the question is, am I going to plug it in this way, or am I going to plug it in this way? Since PCL3 is on top, it's going to have to be on the bottom in the next step. So this is the way I'm going to flip that ratio to plug it in. So I'm going to say there are four moles of PCL3 to every six moles of Cl2. Right here is where the magic happens because what you just did is you were working with PCL3. You have gotten rid of that and you are now working with chlorine gas, which is great because that's what they have asked you to solve for. So this is your stoichiometry step. All it is is simply a mole-to-mole -mole ratio between two things, what they gave you and what they want. What they gave you and the ratio is always on the bottom, what they want is always gonna be on top. They gave me PCL3, they want Cl2. My work is almost done. Now, when I look at this question, they have asked me for the mass of chlorine gas. If I were to stop right here, I would have solved for moles of chlorine gas. And they're just saying, no, don't give me moles. I want to know what the actual mass is. That's easy. We've been doing this for a long time. This is just a mole to gram conversion. So we're going to go a mole of Cl2 chlorine gas has a mass of, we have already figured that out, 70.9 grams per mole. Moles cancel, and if you stop right here, you have solved for grams of chlorine gas. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve. So we're gonna multiply everything on the top together. So 250 times six times 70.9 is 106. 350. This is just a little intermediate step. Then if I multiply everything on the bottom together, 137.32 by 4, that's going to be 549.28. And you guys know the drill here. We just simply divide everything on the top multiplied together by everything on the bottom multiplied together. So that is 193.62 grams of chlorine gas. Now here's what you just found. I know that was a lot of work and sometimes it's easy to lose sight of the actual problem like what was what was I doing? Um, so they're telling you if you if you need to make a minimum of 250 grams of phosphorus trichloride what's the smallest, the least amount of chlorine gas that you're going to have to have? And you just answer that question. You're going to have to have at least 193.62 grams of chlorine gas. Let's say this is what your company does and you make phosphorus trichloride and your customer comes to you and says, I've got to have at least 250 grams of this stuff for something I'm doing on Monday morning. Can, can you do that for me? You would go look at your supplies and make sure you had at least 193.62 grams of chlorine gas. This is just like any recipe. Let's say you need to make two dozen chocolate chip cookies. You look at your recipe and you have to have a minimum of maybe two cups of chocolate chips in order for that to happen. You have to have at least 193 grams of chlorine gas to make 250 grams of phosphorus trichloride. Now, just to kind of recap here what we did before we move on to the next one. Basically, you write down the given. Once you've gotten 
your balanced equation and your masses, all that stuff. That's just getting you set up to go. This is just saying, okay, now I'm ready to solve the problem. Once you're ready to solve the problem, you write down the given. If it's in grams, go from gram to mole. Once you get the given in moles, that gives you permission to multiply by the mole to mole ratio. And the mole to mole ratio is between two things, what they gave you and what they want. That's what I highlighted right here, what they gave me and what they want. It compares the molar amount of those two things. If they ask you at the end to put it in grams, just do a moldogram, easy little step. If they would have asked you to leave the answer in moles, you would have been done right there. So really, stoichiometry is all about getting the given into moles and multiplying that by the mole to mole ratio. Everything else is just housekeeping. Gram moles, easy stuff. That's things that we have been doing for a really long time. So now that we've been through one problem, let's take a look at another example. All right. If excess methane completely combusts in the presence of 90 grams of oxygen, what mass of water will be produced? So I'm gonna go ahead and identify two things, what they gave me and what they want. The given is the one they give you the number for. So they gave me 90 grams of oxygen and they are asking me to find grams of water. So let's write our reaction and go from there. So we know that combustion is when you take a hydrocarbon, in this case methane, which we know is CH4 because we've memorized that, we add oxygen gas, and there are always two products for the combustion of a hydrocarbon, and that is CO2 and H2O. So CH4 plus oxygen gas, and I want you to notice they just use the word oxygen here, but as chemistry students, we know oxygen's diatomic. It's one of the special seven, so we always put a two on it. And we always get the same two products for combustion, CO2 and H2O. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and write down the masses of all these things because I know I'm going to have to do some gram mole conversions, and it's just going to be real handy to already have that done. So... The mass of methane is going to be four hydrogens plus the mass of one carbon, that is 16.05 grams per mole. The mass of oxygen gas is 16 times 2, so that's 32.0 grams per mole. The mass of CO2 is 44.01 grams per mole. I use that all the time. I just know it. And the mass of H2O, most of you probably know this is 18.02 grams per mole. If you are a student who's looking at this saying, where are you getting those numbers? Look at my YouTube video on calculating molar mass and that will answer all of your questions. All right, now we're ready to um, balance the equation. And listen, all this work I'm doing, I'm just trying to get set up so I can answer the problem. So I've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I'm gonna repeat the list on the other side. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I've got one carbon, four hydrogens, two oxygens, one carbon, two hydrogens, and I've got two oxygens here plus one here, so I actually have three. Now, I'm gonna get this thing balanced. I'm gonna use my blue pen to do that so you can clearly see what the new coefficients are. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try a two right here. Two times two gives me four hydrogens. Two times one is two oxygens plus two more is four. I put a two there because I really wanted to have an even number of oxygens on this side so I could get it to pair up with this side eventually. Carbons are good, hydrogens are good. Looks like if I put a two right there, two times two is four and I am balanced. So my coefficients are one mole of methane plus two moles of oxygen gas yields one mole of carbon dioxide plus two moles of water. And again, we don't typically write these ones in. I'm just doing that to draw your attention to the coefficients that we'll be using in the mole-to-mole -mole ratio. 
Now, just because I like to have everything laid out so that um, I can just pull out that information when I need it, I'm gonna go back again and look at what they gave me and what they want. They gave me oxygen gas and they're asking me to find water. So these are the two things I'm gonna be focused on. And I can see right away, this is gonna be a two to two ratio. So I'm gonna jot that down. It's two moles of O2 to every two moles of H2O. Or you could write that, two moles of H2O to every two moles of O2. I'll know which one of these I'm gonna to wanna to use once I've got my problem laid out and I, I know how to plug it in so I can cancel the right things. But I know that I'm gonna use this or this. It's one or the other when I get to the problem. Again, what they gave me and what they want. Those are the two things that make up your mole to mole ratio. So we've got our balanced equation, we've got our masses, we know what our ratio is, so we're ready to solve the problem. So the first thing we will always write down is the given, and the given is 90 grams of O2. So I'm gonna write that, 90.0 grams of oxygen gas. Now, because my given is in grams, I know the first thing I'm gonna to have to do is convert that to moles. And I know how to go from gram to mole because I know there are 32 grams of oxygen gas per mole. So 32.0 grams of oxygen gas per mole of oxygen gas. And you'll also notice that in every single step, I'm writing down the substance. That is super important because in the middle of this problem, we're gonna switch substances, so that's how we're gonna keep up with what we're working with, so make sure you are always labeling what you have. Now, grams have canceled, and now I have moles of oxygen gas. As soon as you get that given in moles, you have permission to use the mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So, because I have moles of O2 on top, I definitely want the oxygen gas to be on the bottom in the next step, so this is the one I'm going to use. Two moles of oxygen gas to every two moles of water. This is my mole to mole ratio. This is the stoichiometry. This is the only new thing we're doing today. And this is what gets us from one substance to the other. I am suddenly not working with oxygen gas anymore now I'm working with water. Again, the mole to mole ratio is what they gave me and what they want. You're always going from what they gave you to what you want. So what you want's always gonna be on top in the ratio. That just might make it a little easier to remember. Now I've just got a little housekeeping to do because they did not ask me for moles of water. They specifically said what mass of water, and that means they want grams. So I know that one mole of H2O has a mass of 18.02 grams. And now I am finished. Everything is canceled beautifully. It's just all lined up and now I'm good to go. Another thing I wanna point out, notice that when I'm doing a gram to mole conversion or mole to gram, I am not putting a number with the word mole. That is because I specifically want the mole to mole ratio to stand out and this is the only time I am going to put a number in front of the word mole because that tells me that is my ratio, that should be the substance I started with on the bottom and what I'm trying to find on top. And again, this is the only new step. You guys already know how to go gram to mole, you know how to go mole to gram, we're just adding that ratio in the middle. Now, I also wanna point this out. Because the mole to mole ratio is in moles, that's why it's so important that your given is in moles before you cross this bridge. I call this the mole bridge. You have to be a mole to pay the toll to cross the mole bridge. If you were to leave this step out, you can't go, you can't go straight from gram to mole here because gram and mole aren't gonna cancel. So you've gotta get this into moles then you cross the bridge, which gets you from one side of the problem to the other, from the substance they gave you to the substance that they're asking you to solve for. 
So we multiply everything on the top together, and that is going to be 3243.6, and again, this is just a little intermediate step. That's 90 times 2 times 18.02. And then we're going to multiply 32.0 times 2, that's 64. Divide the two numbers, and you will get 50.68 grams of water. So here's what you just found. If you have plenty of methane, we weren't worried about how much methane we had, and 90 grams of oxygen, how much water are you actually going to make in this reaction? You will make 50.68 grams of water. So stoichiometry is all about if you have this much of something, how much of this can you make? Or if you want to make this much of something, how much of something else do you need? Again, it's a recipe, and you're just comparing the things that you have that you're mixing together, your reactants, to how much stuff you can make. Or perhaps you want to make a certain amount of stuff, how much stuff do you need? Again, it is just a recipe. We're going to do one more example. So this time we're going to look at a double displacement reaction. If excess aqueous calcium chloride reacts with 150.54 grams of aqueous silver nitrate, calculate the mass of calcium nitrate that is produced. So I can see that they're giving me calcium chloride and silver nitrate. They're mentioning that it's aqueous, that just means it's dissolved in water. That's a big clue for me that this is definitely a double displacement reaction. Also the fact that I have two ionic compounds. So let's write the formula. I've got calcium chloride. We'll put AQ plus silver nitrate. Now, because this is double displacement, I know that the ions are going to switch places and I'm going to get calcium nitrate plus silver chloride. And if you need a little tutorial on this, this is just writing double displacement reactions. So now I'm going to figure up all my masses, jot those down just so I have them. Calcium chloride has a mass of 110.98 grams per mole. Silver nitrate has a mass of 169.81 grams per mole. Calcium nitrate has a molar mass of 164.1 grams per mole. And silver chloride has a molar mass of 143 0.25 grams per mole. I might not use all those, but when I'm ready for them, they're there, and that's just a really good way for a beginning chemistry student to do this. Now, I'm going to balance this reaction. I've got calcium, chlorine, silver, nitrogen, and oxygen. Calcium, chlorine, silver, nitrogen, and oxygen. So we're going to take an atom inventory, get this thing um, balanced, and then we'll be ready to start. One calcium, two chlorines, one silver, one nitrogen, three oxygens. On the other side, I've got one calcium, one chlorine, one silver. That two outside means I have two nitrogens and two times three, six oxygens. So calciums look good. Um, Chlorines, I'm going to go ahead and pop a 2 right here. 2 times 1 is 2 silvers, and 2 times 1 is 2 chlorines. And I think I'll also put a 2 right here. That's going to give me 2 silvers, 2 nitrogens, 2 times 3 is 6 oxygens. So looks like everything's balanced, so I'm good to go. Keeping in mind, this is an understood one, and this is an understood one. 
We have to have these coefficients because that's where we get the numbers for our mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So let's take a look at what they gave us and what they want. They gave me 150.54 grams of silver nitrate. So they gave me silver nitrate and they are asking me to find calcium nitrate. So I'm going to be comparing silver nitrate to calcium nitrate and I can see that's a 2 to 1 ratio. Now another two problems, we jotted that ratio out to the side. Um, you don't have to do that. It's a good way for beginning chemistry students to remember everything. But this time we're not going to do it. We're just going to pull it out when we need it. But these are the two things that are going to make up our ratio. What they gave me and what they want. So let's start the problem. We're going to write down the given which is 150 0.54 grams of silver nitrate. Wow, that's not a very good straight line. And because the given is in grams, I know the first thing I'm going to have to do is convert that to moles. It's got to be in moles before I can use the mole to mole ratio. So I already know the mass of silver nitrate and it's 169.81. So I'm going to write 169.81 grams of silver nitrate to mole of silver nitrate. Now I'm in moles. As soon as you get that given into moles, you have permission to plug in your mole to mole ratio. The mole to mole ratio is what they gave me to what they want. So on the bottom, I will have two moles of silver nitrate, and on the top, I will have one mole of calcium nitrate. So two moles of silver nitrate to every one mole of calcium nitrate. This is my mole to mole ratio. I knew that it was time to plug it in because I had simply gotten my given into moles. Now, I'm not going to stop there because I am now working with calcium nitrate, but they very specifically ask me to solve for mass. So I am simply going to go from mole to gram and a mole of calcium nitrate has a mass of 164.1. 164.1 grams. So I'm going to put all that up so you can see the entire thing laid out. And I'm going to talk you through it one more time and then we'll figure up our final answer. So we wrote down our given in grams. We converted it to moles. It had to be in moles so that these units would cancel. As soon as the given's in moles, you have permission to multiply by the mole to mole ratio, which comes from the coefficients in your balanced equation, what they gave you and what they want. That's where I switched substances in the problem and suddenly I have moved away from what they gave me and I'm now working with the substance they have asked me to solve for. I go from mole to gram at the end. I'm ready to calculate everything up. Multiply everything on the top together that gives you 24703.61. Multiply everything on the bottom together. That's 339.62. Again, this is just a little intermediate step. Um, a lot of students need to just do the top, do the bottom, write it down, and then divide them. It can help you not make a careless mistake putting things into your calculator. Divide those two numbers, 72.7. Four grams of calcium nitrate. So you've seen three solid stoichiometry problems and if we're going to break it down into steps here's what you want to remember. Write the reaction, find your masses of everything in the reaction and balance it. You have to balance it to get your coefficients. Once you've done that, you're ready to actually solve the problem. Write down your given. 
if your given is in grams, convert it to moles. Sometimes the given is in moles, and if it's in moles, you can go straight to this step, but you've got to get the given into moles. Once you get it into moles, multiply by the mole to mole ratio. What you started with is on the bottom to what you're going to is on the top. And then ask yourself, do they want the final answer in moles or grams? All the examples we did today, they wanted the um, final answers in grams. So we did a really quick mole to gram conversion at the end. I am going to post some more stoichiometry um, videos just so you can see some different types of problems. But these are your basics. And um, this is a really good start for beginning chemistry students or for a college student who perhaps needs just a little review.